Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we're going to be talking about HDCP and HDMI splitters. All right, but before we get into the splitter business, I'd like to give you guys a bit of a briefer on HDCP. I guess it's called a primer or a brief, but we're inventing a new word today, the briefer. HDCP stands for High Bandwidth Digital Content Protection. It was developed by Intel way back in 2000, where it was initially released on DVI connections and then actually later on HDMI. Since then, it has broadened its reach to DisplayPort as well, and it is now at version 2.0 that came out in February of 2013. So what is it exactly? Basically, it is a copy protection mechanism that prevents the copying of digital audio and video content across connections. HDCP encrypted content also is prevented from being played back on unauthorized devices, whether they are older devices or whether they are devices that are specifically designed to copy or record content. Essentially, before sending any data, the transmitting device, in our case a PS3, checks to make sure that the receiver is authorized and then encrypts the data and sends it on its way. Okay, so that does it for the educational portion of this episode. Suffice to say, it's designed for people basically to not be able to copy movies. So what about if you're a Let's Play YouTuber, or maybe you just want to record your Resident Evil speedrun for posterity. You want to be able to go back and look at it later. Well, the PS3, and actually at this point still, the PS4, both have implemented HDCP protection that makes it so that capture cards cannot capture the footage in much the same way that they cannot capture things like Blu-ray movies that are playing back on these devices. Both Xbox 360 and Xbox One are now fully unlocked and do not have protection for games over HDCP. And of course, Windows Update would choose this time to uh, go ahead and kick into high gear. So we'll be back in uh, just a moment. So all of this should change soon for the PS4, which will be getting an update to allow video capture, but what if you're stuck with an HDCP-enabled system like the PS3 and you want to record? Well, you could use Component, but of course there will be some signal degradation there. So what will happen if you try to use a recording device like this, I'm going to press the record button, is BOOM! Recording failed! This content is copy protected. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use what is called an HDMI splitter. So if you happen to find one, you'll need an active splitter, not just a passive cable, so it should have a power plug. If you can find one that is HDMI 1.4 compliant, so it'll have to support 3D usually is the one to look for, as well as HDCP, what you can see is we're going to run through the splitter even though we're only actually running from one of the outputs. Uh, we could actually split off to two. You're going to see we will get a signal in a couple of moments here. I would like to do this live if I can. There we go. And we're going to press record and boom. We are now recording our gameplay on the PS3. This is actually what NCIX and I had to do for the whole Xbox One versus PS4 image quality comparison because you, you can't capture from PS4 right now. Now, one final disclaimer, guys, is that this tutorial is just for personal archival purposes of gameplay footage. We don't want to get into the copying of copyrighted videos and such because while HDMI splitters are not illegal, some of the things that you can do with them are. So be careful, be cognizant of the laws that exist in your region and for the type of content that you're working on. But what we were using it for was simply a, an image quality comparison for posterity, not for any kind of uh, sharing or piracy of the content that's being recorded. Uh, to be clear, guys, we're using an AverMedia Live Gamer Portable for the capture here that you're looking at right now. You can see it's recording in the corner, but there are other options out there. We're just all kind of fans of the Live Gamer Portable because it's extremely easy to get running. It's powered just by USB. It can actually live cast through XSplit or it can actually record to an SD card on its own, so it's extremely versatile. It supports both digital through HDMI and analog inputs, <gasps> and it has that handy dandy little record button that you can press on the top when you want to start and when you want to stop recording. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.